Balan Subaya now joins us, Managing Director with uh, Chola Mandram Investment and Finance Company. Balan, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Bright yellow. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Modi's colors today. Yeah. <laughs> How are things with you? Good to connect with you. Should I be asking you what's yeah, in you store do. for the form? Because this is the last time I think we would be asking you questions on Chola Mandal. That's right, that's right. No, but it's a fantastic quarter and it's actually going to be a great year for the company as well. Uh, you know, I think it's uh, we're in a very strong position uh, across our businesses and uh, if you look at uh, what's happening with a with combination of cost of funds also coming down in the market right now, uh, you know, I think we're in a very good position both in the vehicle finance business and the home equity business. Uh if I look at the dispatch numbers which we are getting from the auto industry, the trucks numbers, the numbers from two wheelers, the numbers which are coming from you know all car companies excepting Maruti, somehow the numbers are not that encouraging. So how are you going? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Nikun, the question is how, right? So I think there are a couple of things, right? First off, one of the things that we've done uh, very successfully over the past three years is significantly diversify and broad base our offering, right? So our dependence on any one particular type of asset class in the vehicle space is highly diminished, right? And so we're very broad. Uh, so just to give you a sense, right, because we are now in pretty much every uh, asset that is uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, that people kind of take loans for on in the vehicle uh, segment, uh, our ability to move from one to another where and we see lack of growth in one uh, is very high. So uh, that's what gives us our confidence that we can we can kind of push a very high growth rate, including you know, the fact that you know now 40% of our portfolio is used, and the used market is uh, actually beginning to pick up at a very good pace. Uh, your home equity disbursements have come down. Yeah. Now you said that look, all verticals are looking solid. A vertical which is doing very well for others is the home business and for your firm or for your company for the quarter gone by the disbursements have come down. Yeah. So Nikunj, two things there. Eh? One is we've got a home equity business and a home housing loans business. The housing loans business is up significantly versus the last year. Right, and we're seeing a lot of growth in that business, which is an affordable housing loans product uh, with an average ticket size around 20 lakhs. The home equity business is a loan against property business. And that I had guided that basically we're tightening significantly there because of concerns of oversupply in that market. Uh, you know, what I would see is that that market has bottomed out and is beginning to pick up. That's a lap market. Uh, and that's beginning to pick up uh, for us. So that's that's a good news there. But the housing loans business, which is what you were alluding to, uh, is growing significantly for us as well. And I see that as a huge growth driver for the company going forward. Mm. Hi, Mr. Subaya. Morning. And uh, yellow suits Morning. you, bright, sunny color. <laughs> but I you know, have to ask you, you know, with the plan restructuring at the Murugappa group now, uh, we understand there are going to be some management changes which are going to be taking place. With you probably moving to another group company, what's the plan? Will we talk to you in this current avatar or are you moving to some other company? What are the future plans like? No. No, no, I, I am moving. So basically, uh, you you can talk to me in a new avatar and not in this one. Kind which of is from the next time. Which is what? <laughs> Uh, yeah, basically now I'm going to move to uh, TI, TI Cycles, uh, which is the cycles company. Oh, TI, I, which is TI, TI, which is the, uh, it's a manufacturing company. You know, Valan, I'm, I'm, I'm actually a bit jealous. I've been anchoring with Aisha for years now. She's never told me whether red, brown or black what suits me. You wear <laughs> that color, I would say that to you. I challenge you to wear that kind so of So clearly, look, you need, you need to get more colorful, right? Kind of. That's exactly. what I'm saying, so I'm, I'm a wee bit jealous. <laughs> Oranges and yellows. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I want to also talk about, let's say the headline growth which you can see for Chola Mandal till 2020. I mean, do you, what kind of AUM growth and what kind of, you know, NIM growth can you commit to till 2020? Yeah. 
See, if I look at this this market, right, I don't see any challenge with asset growth in that range of like, you know, 22% asset growth, which then translates to 25% plus uh, profit growth for the next five years, right? I mean, if you go, like three years is what you're asking for. The market size is there, the market availability is there. So I definitely think that, that kind of growth is, is possible in, the, in, in India today, uh, just because that's what the market offers. I mean, we've been able to deliver, you know, cl- uh, that for the last seven years and I definitely think for the next uh, four or five years I, I don't see that as a challenge at all. Growing at the cost of PSU banks or this is the market which is expanding and you're able to monetize it? So I think it's a combination of both Nikun. So if you basically look at it first from a market perspective, uh, you know, the market, uh, financial services, because financial services penetration in this country has been so low, traditionally most people are seeing if you run a shop efficiently, you should be able to kind of, you should be able to go grow at about three times the rate of GDP. That itself is about 21% and that's predominantly from the asset side. Uh, the second thing is clearly, yes, what's happening is the PSU banks are basically ceding share to the private sector banks. The good thing that 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 does for us is that that keeps the private sector banks quite busy uh, in in that business and therefore they they don't come down into our business. Basically, I've always talked about NBFCs in India as a distribution channel for banks, right? And we are, we're, the, we're the biggest borrowers from, from all of the banks in the country today. Uh, and effectively what we do is we borrow from them and distribute more efficiently than them. So basically if there's a lack of growth for private sector banks, I can see them getting more aggressive in our business. But because there's not a lack of growth opportunity, because they are taking share from the public sector banks, that gives us more than enough room to grow in our space. And that's what I think will keep the growth going for us, at least for the foreseeable future, next five to seven years at least good to see but what uh, at what stage are you in the cycle right now would you say the best is yet to come or would you say the best is already behind you Aisha, absolutely the best is yet to come, right? Undoubtedly in India, as I look at the next decade, uh, we have political stability, uh, notwithstanding the color I'm wearing. Uh, but basically, I think if we have political stability uh, and, you know, there, there's nothing stopping, you know, the rate of business growth in India basically compounding at this or better rates for the next 10 years. Okay. Uh, you know, there are lot of NBFCs which are now trying to migrate the way you do business which is based on data based on patterns based on credit history and the share technology I think is making it very easy so what your USP was or what the USP is soon now could become commodity I mean you've got microfinance right. companies which are becoming banks they also have strong yes. penetration and lot of data so how do you think this entire spread advantage which you've enjoyed because of better understanding, better uh, you know book management and, and strong lender data, how will that be, do you think that edge is now going to go? Yeah, actually, the edge is definitely, see, what, what's going to happen is it's a race, right? It's a treadmill. And I've always argued and, you know, I think kind of, you know, my teams here know that basically, it's a constant treadmill, right? So now the con- the lead that you have, right? If you invest in data, if you prior in previous uh, avatars, if you had a two-year lead, that lead is now shrunk to six months. So basically, every time we invest in something, we have to be we have to be prepared that our competitors will be there, right? Within six months, and we have to constantly think of how we stay ahead. But you're right. If that obsession is not there. Uh, within the company on a daily basis on how in terms of how we're going to stay ahead uh, then yes you will get eaten up by somebody else or kind of somebody else will win the race and you won't right but as long as you can keep that obsession uh, that burning platform going within the company uh, I definitely think that there's opportunity for us to uh, to maintain that lead uh, and and continue it though you know I think the lead will continuously shrink uh, depending on how much we keep investing in it Right now we have a lead uh, and I think that, you know, the, the company's mindset is to continue to keep that lead. Okay. Uh, it's going to be uh, Tube Investments very soon for you. Tell me what's the g- game plan there. Are you all geared up to take <laughs> this, take on this new role of yours? Uh, and where do you plan to take Tube Investments, uh, say, in the next one to two years? What's the big vision like? 
Yeah, so uh, Aisha, I, I think it's too early for any commentary on that. I'm actually planning on uh, maybe even taking a little bit of a break between when I finish here and when I start at Tube. Uh, so uh, I think it's far too early for that. So you have to kind of give me some time to first you know, understand that business and then we can, then you can start quizzing me on it. But why, why move from Chola to Tube when you just said the best is yet to come? <laughs> Well, see, I think honestly there are you know, changes overall from, from the group structure perspective, right? So what's happening is uh, A. Valen, who's now the chairman of group, will most likely kind of retire at the, you know, and, and kind of, you know, and, and there will be succession there as well, right? Uh, and so basically as those changes happen, basically, you know, all of us within the family have to look at the roles we play as well. Uh, and so, uh, we, so with those changes, basically, that's what's basically creating a whole lot of change in terms of the structure and the roles people play within the group. Okay, Vilan, you know, um, mm. it's been such a pleasure interacting with you as uh, in your current avatar, and I certainly hope to interact much more of you in your new avatar. But enjoy your break, and when you're back, I certainly hope to connect with you for a cup of coffee. Definitely, Nikunj. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Nikunj. Thanks, Aisha. Okay, that's uh, then the word coming in from the Shola Manlam Investment Management right now. Uh, we will be cutting across to YC Deveshwar as he addresses ITC's AGM. That is going to be in just minutes from now. For the Nifty, we're currently at 99.83. So just as is where we started off, a minute bit of recovery really is what you've seen from the lows of the day. Well, capital has really surged ahead. I think the conference call should be starting any minute over there as well.